and also join this conversation on Facebook on Ugu TV. You we could take your comments as you watch, as we're looking at something that is critical to our country, and we're talking about the manual that binds us together as a people, a, a kind of the operational manual for us as a country, for us as a people, we're looking at the Constitution, we're looking at the constitutional amendments and the matters arising therein. And I have a public commentator in the house who is going to help us kick, time, kick start this discussion. We might likely be joined later by a barrister to also um, give more strength to this discussion. But then I want to welcome Sabolaji Adeniji into the set of New Dawn. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, it's, it's good to be able to be here once again. Good morning, <laughs> sir, and good morning to our listeners, viewers at home. Okay. God bless Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. <laughs> now, yeah. before Moses would take on the, to the question, some yeah. people are saying that even the constitution that we have yeah. is a fraud. They know mm. that. They said, we the people. And the question you are asking yourself is, you know, you and I, were we part of? Are mm -hmm. we really inclusive? Uh, yes. Or, well, and some will say, okay, all over the world, it's mm -hmm. not the entire population of the people that mm -hmm. actually puts down a constitution mm -hmm. that is done by a selected uh, representative mm -hmm. who go ahead. So, some say, okay, when you say it's a fraud, you are not right. But people who are saying, we the people, that we are not part of that people. So what, let's begin with that before we begin <laughs> to look at other issues. Uh, well, um, good morning once again. For as long as my memory serves me, yeah. we have always had, especially when the conversation is about our constitution, okay. we have always had that people say it's a fraud, yeah. and they always refer to this uh, phrase of we the people, yeah. because from hindsight we know that those who fabricated that constitution were the military oligarchs of the time. Yeah. So they handed it down to us. And if you know the, how the military operates, it's not a democratic uh, process. It's not as though they called, them, called in a lot of people from different representations of the Nigerian nation to say, okay, sit down and let us agree on a set of principles to guide how we navigate our nation. But what we know is we have the Supreme Military yeah, Council at the time, and then they called for a few eggs intellectual agents around the country at the time and the fire, fire, uh, faction that um, document. And that was what was handed to us. We had this in 1979 after the Republican Constitution of the but it was that 79 that the actually you know, batted what later became yeah, exactly. the 1999 Constitution amended, um, the Democratic Constitution, which we are still running with today, yeah. despite the amendment in 2010. Yeah, exactly. So. It is true that it is a, a fabrication of the military. So it does not really aggregate the opinions of Nigeria. And no matter how faulty it is, or no matter how they pretend to, that it is good, okay. you always find those lacks, those loopholes in that constitution that, that indicates indeed that it did not emanate from a consensus of, of Nigerians. And so to that extent, we can say it's a fraud, but I think we have, we have moved past that right okay. now. Okay, now, okay. It, before we, you know, you, this one that you are talking about, even the 1979 no, Constitution, yes. you know, there was a constituent assembly. Assembly, yes. You know, uh, and I was talking, you know, it was, I think it was about the 50 wise men, or they became 49 wise men, no, but no. then, they, they, so, and I think the 1999 Constitution built on that. Yes. <laughs> so, technically, maybe, can we really say with those 49 people, where um, did not represent us? Well, in statistics and probability, uh, there's no number that cannot suffice for okay. a representation. Okay. okay. If six people gather today in the interest of Nigeria, one part of your, your political zone, it would amount that it was a representation. Okay. okay? But maybe not enough representation, representation. especially okay. as regards to the subject matter. So 49 people sitting out to think out, think out our future, well, it's a representation in one form or the other. But then, the things that we were dealing with okay. at that material time okay. are not what we are dealing with now. now. 
So nations have evolved. The world has evolved. We have evolved past some of the certain laws that we have, which is now heckling our movement as a nation. And, and um, people, are, like I like to say, the law is not made, man is not made for the law. Law is made for man. So that means that as man goes ahead, as we evolve, we must also try to recalibrate these laws to reflect our current realities. So I think the problem we have had is that we have not been able to properly do that evolution with regard to some of these laws that is now a big problem to us and affecting our development. All right. Uh, yeah. About uh, why is it so hard? Because there have always been complaints in the year and there about uh, the constitution uh, that in the past, you know, uh, efforts you know, were made you know, to yeah. have uh, a new constitution uh, to uh, impute certain laws you know, that will uh, lead to rapid progress. So why is it such a conundrum you know, to draft a new constitution? Well, um, drafting a new constitution altogether may be far-fetched uh, because <laughs> You are talking because you cannot exist in vacuum. So you, uh, you, you, you move from the point that you are and you build on it. Even bigger democracies who have endured um, decades, even um, uh, centuries, did not get to where today with the perfect constitution. They started from a point. Um, but, but I think the difference between those nations and us is that um, they have perfected a system whereby they can regularly okay fine-tune this document this ground norm okay to reflect their realities and make the process of living better for the people even without subjecting it to so much drama that we do here in the name of constitutional review constitutional amendment let us have a new constitution it's a fraud and we are constantly blaming this document whereas some other nations have not to pass a document many years back but through a constant process they kept putting in new things if they have a challenge in the nation today and they feel that it's a matter of the law. Okay. Quickly they amend it so that they can progress. It is, we made it is for us, but why do we constantly tie ourselves to it? And again, one of the other challenges to answer your question more uh, succinctly is that we are a nation, though we are one, but we still run on the ethnic sentiment, okay, Maybe lesser, to a lesser extent religious, but ethnic sentiment. And whenever we agree or we think that we want to talk about our laws, okay. amend it, and do, we are all viewing it from the point of suspicion. What is the Aousa agenda okay. in this law, that, that in this amendment? Okay. What is the Yoruba okay. agenda okay. in this law? Okay. The Igbo nation is we were crying. We are further being marginalized. We are not being carried along with this Nigerian state. And so you always find this. or when we get another point, to, it may be like, what is the president trying to do? Is he trying to position himself for the next yes, uh, term? Yes, or is he trying to, you know, you know, that has always been the problem. So we don't find a wholesome, okay, um, suspicion-free um, yes. amendment. And that is why we are either getting so late before even trying to amend, or even when we amend, we don't amend wholesale. Or we just amend in a way that we try to protect my interest or protect your interest. At the end of the day, you may get your deal from an amendment at the time. But the Nigerian nation in whole doesn't get a good fair deal. And that's why we are still where we are today. Look at the current instance. Okay. In the last couple of months, look at the back and forth we have had. Okay, we are doing direct, we are not doing direct, we are doing the police transition, we are not doing, even when the last amendment was passed a few days ago. Look at what has, not, what has now happened again. Where the president is now talking that, I, I just suddenly saw okay. a provision okay. whereby you are saying that 60, no, 180 days yeah. to either primaries or, or the election, those who are serving mm -hmm. yeah. public officials that must have probably resigned. Yeah. The person not just saw that. And they are doing that from a suspicion of the fact that they want to exclude serving appoint, appointed officers from mm -hmm. th that process. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, that protects the yeah, legislators yes. okay. who yeah. will probably still be in office and expanding um, uh, influences yes. at that material time. Meanwhile, you'll have disenfranchised those who are appointed. Mm. Okay? But the president is now saying that, look, the constitution already takes care of the term and tenure of those who are in public service. Okay? Relative to the election, which is 30 days. Mm. So why are you bringing this? You're just stretching and making this far-fetched. And if you now, if you are now what we call 
an uninterested bystander. Mm -hmm. you, are, can, you can quickly see the shenanigans, okay. the protectionism in what they are all trying to do okay. in all of this. So if we now run a nation on trying to protect personal interests, protecting group interests all the time, you can't subject the constitution of a nation to that. Okay. The constitution of a nation must rise above personal yeah. sentiment, yeah. ethnic yeah. sentiment, and all political sentiment and say, look, this is what is good for Nigeria and we have to do it. Okay, uh, the Joint Committee uh, proposed uh, 68 bills you know, for uh, amendments yes. and uh, 49 items you know, were, were passed. Uh, in its entirety, uh, what is your own impression about this amendment? Though it's not who, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, it will still go to the states, <laughs> yes. you know, but at this level, you know, what is your impression? Um, the impression will be to look at the, a few of the details. Okay. Okay, what was passed, they were a total of 113, if you look at it very well. And maybe they were able to actually legislate on the numbers that you've said. Well, well we, we, I, don't, I can't go through the whole government of 63, yes. but we must be looking at which are the ones that are really, really affect the social economic development and peace of Nigeria. And what will also ensure good governance and the delivery of democratic dividends to our people. I'm happy that they are now considering, you know, the proper separation of powers and the uh, exercise of rights for you know local government yes, we are so talking so about financial autonomy for the judiciary we are talking about um uh, uh, the electoral law yes. in terms of making it more electronic and reducing the influence of people on it we are also talking about uh, allowing the local government as a tier yeah. of uh, yeah. uh, government to operate in the way that it was it was put together some of these amendments are very good, okay. okay? We are talking about taking certain things away yeah. from the exclusive legislative yeah, list and making yeah, them concurrent, concurrent so yeah. that we are not boxed by the powers of the executive yeah. to do some of these things. Yeah. Railway, um, air force, yeah. power. all those. And I'm also happy about power. I really hope that they can give sleep to that. Okay. One of the biggest problems we have had is that we run a central grid system. Even if we have capacity as a state now, yeah. they say, okay, we can generate certain level of megawatts and distribute to our people. Okay. You, no matter your investment in it as a state, even when you, when you get the approval, you generate and then donate it to the national grid, which they will now still distribute with the way they want. So that doesn't help us. What stops the state from saying, oh, look, my priority is to do power. Okay. And yeah. if we have constant power, it will affect, there's a spiral yeah. uh, um, effect. Effects. And it decides to use its own money to go and purchase power technology from Germany, from Korea, and, and make sure that everybody has power in the state and we are running it just like we are running a recharge card. Yeah. And you just know that power don't, wouldn't go. So what, what stops the state from doing that? But do you know under the current circumstance, the law are a problem. Okay. So these are the kind of issues that we have used our laws to arrest our own development. So if this type of um, amendment that was passed now, is able to scale through till the point of um, yeah. getting presidential assent. It will be fine. Veto for the, the autonomy between the legislator in terms of finance and judiciary, so that let everybody function without looking up to the other one, so that there can be proper checks and balances. I used to say that one of the bane of our democracy today is the fact that we do not have a legislature that is able to function okay. as it thinks, okay, relative to the executive. Okay. Because if you look at what part of the responsibility of the legislature is oversight. Yes. And um, in doing this oversight, okay. despite the pretensions, there are a lot of uh, uh, orders on the part of the legislature to effectively carry out this oversight. Yes. And if there were, those orders were not there, you would discover that you are able to cut off okay. excesses executive excesses and recklessness mm -hmm. which help the people ultimately so and of course veto for the judiciary there was the crisis hoopla about around it around last year in terms of uh, especially in the states yes. when they were talking about do we allow them to run uh, their funding and financial management okay outside of executive mm -hmm. influence okay. this will also help our jurisprudence okay, okay. now among other things so i think a few of these things will really help us if it is able if they are able, able to, to scale but, through. But what about uh, resource you know, control, uh, fiscal, uh, federalism, yeah, yeah. Uh, state police? 
you know, many Nigerians are saying uh, none uh, of the amendments you know, addressed uh, this, yeah, which uh, I, <laughs> I was going to come to that because those are really the fundamental issues. Okay. I have always said that the problem of Nigeria okay. will not be addressed by constitutional amendment because the law itself is not the only problem. I, and I've also said that despite the difference in our laws as it is, okay. if only our professionals even are there strictly to the, pro the one that we have right now, yeah. we will be a better nation. But if you say it cannot be um, addressed by constitutional amendment, and then we are saying at the same time that even what we have, mm. you know, if, if we um, follow it to term, mm. um, we could still do something for the nation. Is yes. that not contradiction? Uh, term? Yes, it's not a contradiction, and I'll explain what I mean. Okay. It may appear, but it's not. Okay. What I mean is this. If you look at the current situation, yeah. in amend amending the laws okay. is one. Okay. There are fundamental matters that just constitutional amendment won't resolve. We are talking of restructuring a system. Okay. Okay. That is basically faulty. Okay. The National Assembly itself is one of the subjects of what even needs to be restructured. <laughs> and we do allow that. And we do allow that. that. Let me cite a simple example for okay. you. We, we must ask ourselves in this country that do we still need these two okay. chambers okay. running the same thing, receiving the, the, the volumes of money that it takes, and all that goes into maintaining them. Okay. With the National Assembly today, accede to that and amend that, that we should have a unicameral okay. legislator. Would they the, amend the constitution via RMFAC? To say that the humongous yeah. monies that we are receiving, we do need it. We don't need to just, we, all we need is just to sit yeah, in what we need. You see, these excesses okay. are, will not be addressed by the National Assembly. Okay. It will be addressed by some other um, uh, sitting. Okay. okay, that has the force of the law, with executive backing to say this is what we want as a people. All right? The structuring will take care of that. Okay. It is the structuring that will take care of matters like state policing, okay. okay, that can be state, because then you're not talking about uh, uh, um, devolution of powers. Okay. They will not really address devolution of powers from the Senate. Okay. It takes an executive interest by a president who feels that, look, I really want to move this country forward. Okay. Let the state operate at their level. Yeah. A strong but liberal center that does not have, we have all the monies that Nigeria has. Do you know why there's so much corruption in this country today? Yeah. It is because the federal government is taking about 49 or is it 51 percent yeah. of the yeah. consolidated yeah. revenue funds, okay. giving the state and the local government to yeah. share the rest. You ask yourself, who are the people who are, are they federal government people? Yeah. Are they federal government? The lands are in the state, the people are in the yeah. state. You now give them so little money, and there's so much money that are in the center. Yeah. Is being filtered they will look at many agencies of government. Nigeria, the other day I was looking at the budget. Yeah. The Nigerian Road and Building Research Agency has an 80 billion naira budget. What is that agency doing with 80 billion? Uh, the Nigerian, um, Nigerian uh, Oceanography, uh, uh, Nigerian Maritime and Oceanography, I've forgotten the uh, name now, okay. has about 40 something billion naira in its budget. You ask yourself, what oceanography are we doing in this country? And do you know why? It is because of the volumes of money that we have okay. Okay. with the federal government. It is so much. The Oracle Committee report of 2015, or was it after the confirmation of 2014, said that let us merge okay. many of these okay. agencies from about over 400 or something to about 150, so that we will release so much money that is locked up in the center yeah. for the local yeah. government to, to, to feed on. So these are matters of restructuring that it takes a more deeper interest of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, okay, to make certain executive laws, okay. executive orders, okay, that will have the concurrence of maybe the National Assembly to happen. All right. Uh, we're still going to be looking more at other issues because this is a very, very germane topic for us as a nation. We are getting towards the 2023 election. We're going on a short break now. When we come back after this break, we're going to also look further and then we'll bring on another guest who's going to be part of this discussion.
We're glad to have you back on the New Dawn Wednesday edition, and we're still at the interview segment, the discussion segment. We're looking at constitutional amendment matters arising. And I'm glad that we're already being joined in the House by a barrister at law, somebody we should know. And now I have to be very, very careful because whatever I say might be used against me in the court of law. <laughs> barrister Isaac Azuya, we'd like to welcome you. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, viewers. All right. Of course, we already have in the house the public commentator, Mr. Bolaji Adeniji. Now, uh, let's, let's quickly bring on the barrister here. We're looking at constitutional amendment. Yes. And we have tried to look at, you know, the different issues surrounding it. Some have said it's a fraud. Some have said, and then we also try to look at even what we had just over the past few weeks. Now, let's take on your own perspective. What is wrong with our constitution? Why is it that there is always this problem that every time we want to have an amendment, there is always crisis? Uh, the, it's not like a crisis. The constitution itself provided for a way through which it should be amended. Okay. The, amend of, the amendment, the way to amend the constitution is provided and enshrined in the constitution itself. Okay. That way is a little bit cumbersome. It's not, that, it's not like every other lawmaking processes. Okay. So for you to get that procedure, it will be that cumbersome, and the, the current National Assembly may not be able to succeed in getting that amendment okay. because of the procedure involved in it. Now, because a lot of people have said the constitution we have now yeah. is an inherited constitution. Okay. It's a constitution that the constitution that we, the people of Federal Republic of Nigeria, have come together and say God's assembly, they then say, it is not we, okay. it is them, like the military government and the rest that sat up and gave us a constitution. Okay. But we have passed that stage. Okay. A child that is, that is uh, stubborn at primary school, at secondary school should be a bit better. In the university, should be a bit better oh also. So we have passed the stage of complaining of the constitution is bad or is not bad. But one thing we have in Nigeria is, as Nigeria progresses, mm. the law and the society moves for a pursuit. No, no, they can, the law cannot move above, the society cannot move above. For instance, our constitution needs to now look at things about internet okay. and other laws, not just constitution, other laws. So that tells you that internet was not there when the constitution was made. Okay. Internet was not there when some of these other laws were made. Okay. Now, internet has come on board. Yeah. We need to make a law to incorporate what the society has brought. Okay. So the, both of them must grow together. Yeah. Now, Section 8 and Section 9 yeah. made provision for the amendment of the Constitution. Okay. Um, let me say this. One of the reasons why it seems as if the Constitution is bad and other is because Nigerians, sometimes, okay. a lot of times, we disobey the law rather than obey the law. Okay. There are countries where you don't, need, you don't need, for instance, you don't need to force people to obey the law. They obey the law naturally. I am guilty of it. You are guilty of it. We are all guilty of it. Sometimes, except we see the road traffic, uh, uh, federal yeah. road agency, who will not put on our seat door. But when you start them off, ah, they are coming, they are coming. You shouldn't be. The moment you enter your car, that's will be the first thing you will do. Yeah. That is obedience to the law. Nobody is there, nobody is seeing you, but because you know this is the law we all have come together to make. It's binding on me, I'm therefore obliged to obey the law. Okay. But a lot of us don't. So, as common as sometimes the cyclist man, Motorcycle man will carry you on the bike and you're going, and the thing is red. The man will pass, and you'll say, Yes, correct man. But that's, that shouldn't be. Okay. You should be able to tell him, Wait, 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 wait. Let it show okay. us the green before we move. But we don't do all this. That's because it is a little bit in our character to disobey laws. A lot of our uh, leaders travel abroad, they obey this law naturally. Okay. It, that you don't need to force them. But when they come here, you force them. When you force people in the public office to keep to the rules of the public office to do the discharge their duties accordingly, then you need a stiffer law in order to hold them accountable. Okay, this just before you go on that, because you are telling everybody, all of us, we are responsible, we are this one. Some people would also say lawyers. They're actually the main cause. Because sometimes an issue that should be black, a lawyer can argue from different perspectives and still tell you that this black is not black. He can eventually tell you it is white. When everybody sees that it is, 
you know, because we are talking constitution, we're, we're talking about the vagaries, the things that, you know, so some people are also looking that, okay, even when it comes to interpreting the constitution, when it comes to uh, analyzing the contents of the constitution, the, 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 the guys who are even there are not even sincere. So it, it's like, it's everywhere, the law. Well, that, I'm not saying that's not my perspective. I'm just saying from the street. You know, people are also that, saying that. that that's us. No, you know, people are saying, okay, even the guys who are supposed to interpret the law. Have you seen the, the, the latest judgment of the uh, Federal High Court? Okay. On the Mahi's case? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, but is that the final? Are they, can they not get to the Supreme Court? Is that, is that, is that the final decision? As it stands now, yeah. that is what it is. But they can go to the Supreme Court. Yeah, example, it can be obtained at the Supreme Court. Anybody can go on appeal. You will not be able to say whether it will okay. or it, it will not. Okay. Except the Supreme Court makes pronouncement on But as it is today, okay. the judiciary is equally uh, a partner yeah. in democratic progress. Okay. And they have displayed that and they have opposed the provision of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, the question you will now ask me is, has this not been happening? Okay. That's the question you ask me. Now, the court, the court of law, do not go sniffing for facts and evidence and use it to decide the case. Okay. The court of law is like that old man that patiently waits for you to come and greet him. Okay. He does not go after you to, to come and greet him, no. Okay. The court of law patiently waits for people to bring cases to it. Okay. And the court decide based on what they bring before it. Remember this law is like uh, when the judge is deciding a case, yeah. he looks at everything holistically, which he may not tell you and which you do not know. Okay. The judge looks at the public interest. Okay. He looks at the interest of the person standing before him. Okay. He looks at the interest of the state or the complainer. Okay. Now, I give you an instance. What, for instance, if I injure this man and he dies, God forbid, after one year, Okay. The law is that I am not responsible for the death of the man. Okay. That's the law. But in the eye of the public, I have killed this man. He's a murderer. He's going scot free. The law didn't do that. Have, have you not killed him? But the law is that I did not kill him if he dies after one year. That's the law. But so barista. we are bound by the law, not by opinions of persons. But Barista, because uh, on this case, yeah. Umayi's case, people are confused. Is the constitution not clear? enough over defection the constitution is clear but the clearness of the constitution is still subject to a lot of interpretation okay. sometimes they tell that when there's a national issue at the top that is capable of breaking the party or something then you can defect okay. so the constitution provided and provided the condition for such defection, defection. so a lot of people have, do the general and people don't challenge it and when you don't tell me, Nigeria, we are docile, including we, the lawyers, especially. Okay. The lawyers should be at the forefront. The lawyers we met, or the lawyers I did not meet, the lawyers I heard of, okay. when the lawyers were at the forefront, and every little thing they come forward, they come to the court. And by that, you are checkmating the offices of persons. Look at the recent Supreme Court judgment that bad uh, Aindoka from, uh, from uh, at the general office or something. That is a judgment. It tells you that as you're in public office, be careful. It is entrusted into your hand. Whatever you do will be questionable. So people don't go to court to challenge this act. And if you don't go to court to challenge it, the court will not sniff for evidence and come and decide the case by itself. So they have come and they have succeeded. They have set a precedent. And I tell you that precedent will be followed by others. You will now begin to see flood of cases okay. in the court regarding this. And that if it's not upturned at the Supreme Court. That's the yes, yes, that yes. Is, yes. Because we it, always, okay, we it probably, that depends a lot of times, it that depends on administrative powers okay. of the person the players in the industry of ju uh, uh, justice. Okay, okay. The administrative powers for the players in the industry of justice helps the court to decide in one way or the other. Okay, okay. Look at the case of uh, this man I was sent to prison and later the Supreme Court the Supreme Court that says okay. they Man that decided the court, okay, okay. the man that the judge that decided the court was at the point of deciding that case, not a high court judge, was already a, fed, a court of appeal judge. Okay. And the constitution is that the federal high court will be mounted by a federal high court judge. Okay. And the man is already a court of appeal. And he came down to decide the case. So to the public, ah, okay. but to the law, they are in line.
Okay. okay. Now let's let's go on to the public because this is our own public. You you can deal with the law. You know, a lot of the times people have lost confidence even in our court. Mm. You know, uh, based on what Barrister is saying, you know, the law they will tell you the law interprets this in this way. The law interprets this in this way. Is there really hope for the common man? We are still coming to constitutional amendment where there are one or two other issues, but I want us to. How do we navigate this as a person, you know? How do you fight for your own right? How do you ensure that, you know, even when you see clearly some of these issues and you are helpless? Well, um, all rights are still protected by the law. In enforcing those rights, they are still going to go back to the law. Okay. And so there's no way any man will run away from the law. So despite the incongruities in the law, or the technicalities which um, those who operate the law use in deciding matters in the direction that they want, we all have to still subject ourselves to the law. So we can't run away from it. But of course, we also understand that every nation um, is a reflection of um, how they run their system. And like I like to say, the judiciary itself is not extricated from the nuances and the existential realities of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our nation. And so therefore, you constantly still find the judiciary still trying to win itself from some of these uh, tendencies. And, and, you, and like you said, sometimes uh, the court is not a charitable organization. Uh, so it works on the principles before it as established. Okay, they're taking into cognizance what is before it, what is brought before it, and it looks at it and then makes a decision. And so when the people, okay, use the lacks in the law, no. okay, and then some other extraneous factors okay. to come and hamper the court, okay. the court will also give judgment within these con uh, 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 contestations. Yes. So right or left, whichever way they now give it, it will not appear to be right. Okay. All right. right. Now, yeah. so, so <laughs> therefore, sometimes I, I, I like to be, be charitable to them okay. because they are working within a very, very tough system. But at the end of the day, we just have to hope that the student continues to evolve in the right direction. And I think one of the few things that can be done yeah. is to grant them this full autonomy okay. so that at the end of the day, they can actually administer justice yeah. to their conscience and okay. not pander to any other sentiment. Okay, okay. Uh, this is not before you. This is just on a light, uh, lighter note. Yeah. Uh, uh, the law. Yeah. Why is it that always all your clients, they will always fall sick? All your big, 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 big clients. Yeah. Yeah, the next thing you are going to, the only thing you are going to hear is uh, on health gram. This one on the guy who wasn't sick before. Sometimes you will even see the colors on their neck. Is it that you guys have run out of ideas? Those are the, or is it that the guy of the shenanigans I said that? That's the one time. You see, the truth is, uh, when you meet, when the law provides a particular road for you to get to a destination, okay. mm -hmm. anything you put, any way you manage yourself in whatever manner to enter that road and it takes you to that destination, <laughs> the law will uphold that, yes, you have arrived safely at this destination. So a lot of times people do, yes, psychologically also, it affects people. The moment they get to prison or the moment they, you pronounce something of judicial on them that is uh, negative, okay. there's, there's this psychological thing that will grow inside, especially the old people. Okay. When you do that, there's this psychological growth and it can now begin to help, uh, affect their organs. Okay. And by that, and ordinarily, somebody that is not sick, yeah. if he becomes sick, if he's not in court, you will not know. Okay. Nobody will call your attention to it. But the moment he's not involved in court matter, even if it's not malaria, okay. the court will bring it to the knowledge or the yeah, yeah, bring it to the knowledge of the court. Of the court. Now, I like to tell people something. You see this scale of justice that is like this. Yeah. It's like a mother. It's not a man, if you look at it very well. Okay. They call it the goddess of justice. Okay. Now, if all of us sit here, I've said this several times there, and the child pulled on his, his or her body, and he comes here, all of us will say, hey, hey, go back to your mother, go back to your mother, go back to your mother. Let's go. But if the mother is here, even if she's seated here, and she sees the child, she will excuse herself yeah. to go and wash that child up yeah. and bring the child. So the law or the court sees 
everybody has needs to be attended to. Okay. And whenever you come to the court, it says, oh, this person needs attention. Let me give attention. It is when we give you attention, we not say that your attention is inimical to us. Okay. That's when the, uh, the oh, that's sword okay, will land. Okay. Moses. Okay, yeah. Um, Mr. Bolaji, yes, yes. back to constitutional amendments now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the amendments has recognized uh, the autonomy of local government, uh, particularly financial autonomy. Yeah. But a school of thought uh, still uh, believes that control over local governments uh, should be a state responsibility. It's an aberration of the most banal order. Okay. The constitution creates a tier of government. When it was created in 1979, I think, they didn't create it to be an appendage of the state. Is the state, is the state government an appendage of the federal government? Is it the federal government that is uh, uh, um, uh, carrying out the expenditures of the, of, the, of, the, of the state government? No. But over time, because of the weak laws and um, how the constitution has not protected the, 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 the local government, the state governors have been able to use a, a fraud, what they call this state local government joint accounting system, whereby they receive the monies from the federal allocations of the state and all its local governments together, they long place somewhere. And once it gets to the state, the governor begins to no, educate, um, begins to expand it and begins to and now do handouts to look at, we are now doing handouts to a tier of government that is protected by the constitution. And that was how it has been that today now, most local governments are just salary payment centers. They are, they are so weak and they cannot even discharge basic functions to the extent that we are now calling their existence. And so what we see is a decadence over time that has made our governors overlord over local government and almost eroding them. That was not the intentment of those who fashioned out. They need to have another tier of government that can really attend to you know, uh, developmental issues at the grassroots. The state, you see, the state, state is big. You cannot actually attend to certain things in, in, very, in local areas, but the local government using their water units, know where this road is, know where this market is, know where the earth center is. They can do it. Even there are some roads that can be graded. But today you find the state government wants to take up such roads. Because why? They know they are taking up the money. Let me, there's a state that I will, I will not mention. The governor practically said that the reason why, when it was accosted, that why is it that you, have, you barely spent uh, left nothing for them, other than the salaries, payment of teachers, and maybe about 1.7 or 2 million euro for the um, state chairman to do a few things. He said, because why? I've taken over the development of their development responsibility in terms of roads, markets, and all that. So therefore, I have to expend the money. What do you see? The local government monies have now become the playground of our governors. To use as they wish. It's an aberration, it is illegal, it is inimical to growth. So what we are praying and hoping for that this particular amendment, because it, it is part of the one that, that scales to, really, really gets passed by the tutors yeah. of yeah. I don't know, I don't know. assembly yeah. and eventually gets presidential and uh, presidential action. It will indeed liberate us and give us development. Let me give another example on this finally. In um this Ogun State that we were, during the regime of Osman Benga Daniel, that was the last time that we had local governments that were functioning. Just because why? The government said that, okay, I will not still allow you to have a substantial part of those monies to work with, which they did. Which they did. And that was the last, when we were having local governments doing projects. And the government was going to local government to commission um, uh, commission project two days, three days, and that, and that was it. Uh, but, but there, are, there but are some fears yes. that if you give them financial autonomy, yes. there, there's a likelihood that they would miss. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be assuming they will miss? Why would why the, the <laughs> president okay. think that I have to start each minister each state because okay. the constitution provides a minister for each state? Go and be spending the money of that governor, mm -hmm. assuming that the governor wants to mess up with the government. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is imbecilic, pure life to be thinking that way. It's just the governor trying to still hold on tight 
to this money for the state government. And they have to be liberated. They have to be liberated. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, Mr. Bradley, now that uh, prisons, uh, railways of power, are now that the uh, concurrent uh, list of those still subject to you know, uh, state houses okay. of assembly, uh, but uh, with no resource control, uh, really, I mean, empowering states you know, to have control over uh, their resources, uh, will anything change? Well, that also falls under the things I dealt with when talk, talking about restructuring, okay, and things that in terms of the of of powers. Resource control is also a matter, one of the subjects we need to deal with under restructuring. To say that, look, let the states take up certain responsibilities. What you have on your table at the federal is too much, it's too weighty. They can't even handle it. While you are leaving the states to manage, for, for instance, one of the elements that given resource control the state can handle is that it free up a lot of funds for them. They can develop at their own pace, but you have put land, you have put certain volume of water, okay, power, all of this, you have put them under the federal government, okay? And um, leaving the states to now hold on to whatever it is you are giving to them every 28 days from oil proceeds that is now dwindling. Meanwhile, many of them have gold, metaphorically speaking, under their ground, within their environment that they can explore to make more money. But you know why? They can't even explore it because everything under the ground belongs to the federal government. Everything in water to an extent belongs to the federal government. All minerals. All minerals. So why do we continue to hobble ourselves from the kind of growth that we should experience? That's because why we have a senior brother who doesn't want, who wants to hold on to many things and not delivery service. Meanwhile, you can free up many things and even help yourself. If I'm a rich man now, okay, I'm a millionaire. But my younger brother is feeding on me. My other younger brother is feeding on me. My younger sister is feeding on me. At the end of the day, I may be feeling important. But we are a poor family. Okay. And I'll be stressed. But if I'm able to release a few things and my brother is able to make it, he's fine, he's doing good, we will all be happy. We have we'll become a better family. We have, we have more capacity to do things that we want. And everybody is happy. But we have a federal government that wants to hold on too much. And that's why one of the things that the structure will address is the resource control. Okay. Then, in terms of the fiscal restructuring, what monies should now be in the federal government, like I said earlier? Let the federal government loosen up its grip on over 49, a bit 51% of the consolidated, consolidated revenue fund. Let the states have more money. And let even the local governments have more money, because that is where the development is. I used to ask, what do we do? What are we doing with the federal ministry of agriculture? Are they agri land, uh, federal land? Mm -hmm. They are known. But the volume of money that is, that is in that ministry and about 18 agencies under it is so much that you don't even understand. So these matters will be addressed by restructuring. And yeah. restructuring is a big issue that we are not okay. ready to get into. The law, we are going to come to that restructuring because some people are saying that, okay, when you are even saying this restructuring thing, you are not communicating anything. The reason is your own concept of restructuring is different from the other zones. My concept of restructuring. Concept of restructuring. And then secondly, we had a constitutional, during the previous administration, there was a constitutional conference, there was a conference. Yeah. 2004. 2014. 2014. So, what would have been the outcome of that conference? Would that have, are we now going, do we need another constitutional conference again? Do we need another confab again? Or that one has already been confined to the dustbin of history? So, two things. We're ter talking in terms of restructuring, you know. Then he was talking about the fact that let the federal, let, you know, do you think the federal will give up easily like that? My, this is where they talk. You want to it's like they will say to you, you know. So, how do we address all of these issues? You see, you're very, you're very correct. Look at the issue of a uh, uh, river state on a pass. Okay. Mm. You see, River State will say this is our pass. money. <laughs> Let us use this money to develop our. And the federal government will say no, this money should come to the federal, to us. So I think they are still in court on that. They are in court of appeal. That's part of the things that the state, the state is feeling that if you want to restructure, you, rest you don't give, you don't give birth to a child and start running to buy beating rubber and the towel and uh, the 
the pampas and the rest. Okay. You provide your pampas yeah. and your bathing rubber before the child okay. even arrives. Okay. If we don't have anything on ground, we can talk of restructuring. Mm -hmm. Because restructuring means two things. Okay. No, one, give power to some persons. Okay. Give money to some persons. That is the plain language. Mm -hmm. And stay to some certain extent, stay a bit slim and small. The federal government is in control of all minerals, is in control of all uh, coal, gold, and the rest. And the state has nothing. The federal government is like the concurrent and the, the, the legislative uh, list. The federal government has a lot there. The state is saying, give us some of this. Okay. Restructuring part of it politically still means in the political agenda. The powers of the president should be reduced okay. to some certain extent in this way and in that way. So that the, the issue of power corrupt and absolute power corrupt okay. absolutely will not arise. And that is the problem of presidential system of government that we're running. The president is the alter ego, is the alpha, is the omega of it all. Okay. Look at the issue of IG. Inspector General Police is sitting in Abuja there. He does the, the commissioner of, okay, look at what happened in Magodo, mm -hmm. in Lagos. Yeah. The governor of Lagos State is saying, I am the chief executive yeah. officer, uh, yeah. chief security yeah. officer of this state, so we don't take order from you, sir. So assuming there's an, there's, there's an emergency yeah. of security issues that needs to be attended to, the hands of the state governor is for he can't do anything because the law said he can't. Yeah, but some are even saying this so-called federalism that we are practicing, that we are not actually practicing it. We are practicing Nigerian mm -hmm. federalism. Not federalism as it is written in, as it is done in other states. We are practicing Nigerian kind of federalism. It's a special kind of federalism, <laughs> not the universal <laughs> one you read in your government textbooks. Okay, okay. No, in the one you read in your government textbooks, like America, for instance, yeah. the states are powerful. Okay. The states in America are powerful, not the federal. Okay. Now, very few things, like not everything goes to Supreme Court in federal. You have like Supreme Court in states. You have like, like for instance, just imagine you have IG Southwest, okay. IG uh, North. South South, okay. IG North, IG Southeast. Okay. Now you have you have drawn policing yeah. down to the people at the grassroots. Okay. I give you an instance of what is happening. Custom is custom is systematically posting people to their own area. The the controller of custom in Abuja here now is from Ogun State. The one in uh, the controller of uh, Oyo Oshun Command yeah. is from Oshun. Okay. So, hardly will you have these persons here that will not be able to take charge of, the, of activities. Okay. But I'm not saying you must do that. But what I'm saying is, draw the government. If you and I are here, we write petition to IG. It is far for us to connect. But if you write petition to the IG of uh, uh, Lagos State in charge of. So, what we are saying is, devolve these powers. Okay. Let us begin to enjoy, like the, like the power of the uh, VP, for instance. It's so small. Why not give them more independent powers? Okay. And like okay. the states, why not give them some, uh, like the tasks? Allow them to use what they, to uh, benefit from what they raise. Okay. By so. that, a lot of competition will come up and development will come up. So the issue we have is, first of all, sincerity. If we have sincerity and we want to run government that will benefit everybody, the federal government has no option, that has, that will not have option than to devolve these powers, rather than holding on to the whole powers yourself. And when you do that, states will rise up, and the states themselves will devolve some powers. Okay. Uh, Barista, what is the situation with uh, that? Uh, where does it belong? Because I could recall that one of the rejected bills you know, was the retention of that on the concurrent list. Oh. That belongs to the federal government. But is it on the exclusive list? The tax, I think the, the, the way the international people divide their tax activities, like the normal small, small tax you raise here, yeah. the one that goes to Obo State. Yeah. The salary, if uh, you have a custom officer that is here, for instance, he's paying his tax, that is how they do it, that some okay. goes to federal, some go to. Uh, he's in the ECO, but his tax goes to. Federal. federal and some come to state that's how they meet and okay. they divide it but the issue of VAT, that's what they are fighting in a, yes, in river state 
The Lord says the same. We are this money is being raised from here. Let us enjoy it. Father government to say no. Let the money come over to us. And I think the money of consumption. Okay. So that's where they get it. That's what they say. So I think that's the they want to push it to concurrent now. Mm. Okay. Now let's let's now begin to bring everything to a close because unfortunately time is not in our favor. We'll just take your last words now. Um Barrister and then uh, Mr. Deniji, amendment. Are we going to go on for life? Can we, you know, can we not make it easier? Your last words. Mm, well, well, like I said at the start, the constitution is an evolving document. As the nations, as the nation evolve, okay. okay, the laws must also reflect the reality. Okay. In the next 10, 15, 20 years, the world will have evolved in a certain area. Right. The constitution must also, the law must also meet it. So that we can we can be at par. Right. So it's not as though we won't continue to have mm -hmm. amendment, but let, let's do it on a basis of merit, not as per sentiment, ethnic sentiment, and all that. That's what. And I hope that so the critical elements of this amendment that have just been passed will sail through. All right, the law. Yeah. Amendment is something that we must continue to do. Okay. Because it's an evolution. And as we do that, one of the areas that we lack is we National Assembly don't carry Nigerians along in amendment. Okay. They should carry Nigerians along in amendment for them to understand. And we'll have a perfect one. All right. We want to thank you very much. I'm sure we, we've got one or two things from this segment. I'd like to thank Barrister Isaac as is only had to as the Thank you, being part of this program, and then the public commentator, uh, Zabolaji Adeniji. Well, what I like expect mind. from you guys is that we will always be having amendments, mm. and the matters will always be arising. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's no end yeah, to constitutional true. amendments. Yes. You know, as this nation state evolves, then of course, definitely issues will always evolve. There would also always be need for constitutional amendment. We want to thank you for this segment. We've not ended the new dawn. We still have another segment after this. We're going to be looking at the kidney, which is an integral part of the body system. After this timeout.